We're lost in the 50s near Sharpsville, Indiana, and I'm with Jim Richardson. Jim, you had a dream. Tell us about this dream you call a summer place. I guess it's kind of like a painting you can step into. Uh, I love art, and um, I, a lot of times I'll step back and admire a painting and, and wish that I could actually step into the picture. And so one day as I drove my driveway after driving around the countryside, it, I, as I did every week, and looking for remnants of the 50s, I thought, you know what, I think I'll just kind of create it in the backyard and people can step into it and step back in time. Well, what I love about this place is that everything is authentic. We've, we've tried to restore all the, the authentic uh, items from that period, the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Uh, of course, in the 50s, we were not blessed with money, so most of the things that we had were still remnants from uh, the past two decades. And uh, uh, with rare exceptions, if it's something we can't find, we'll recreate it. But most times it's the authentic uh, uh, piece that's been restored. Well, a summer place really is a, a small village. It's right in your backyard. And uh, tell us about what we can see here. Okay, it's still a work in progress. We, um, uh, what we have completed so far is a standard station, a movie theater with a... Uh, uh, with a marquee that was put up in 1935 in Kokomo, Indiana, the Oasis marquee. We have a stainless steel diner that's actually a copy of two diners that were in Kokomo in the late 40s and early 50s, um, although our diners are deeper, so it'll hold more people. We have a barber shop that uh, reminds me of the barber shop that I went to when I was a kid. Uh, we have a mobile garage, a fire station, police station, and a train station. Uh, we're a work in progress, as I said. We're getting ready to take down the fence, uh, I hope, uh, here shortly, and continue one of the streets on through with a uh, church that appears to be about 100 years old. It'll seat about 200 people and have uh, a thousand pipe pipe organ in the back. Uh, we'll also have a little um, uh, Texaco station with a brick apron and the gravity pumps like you would see in the 20s, a general store, and at some point we hope to make the house next door look like a 50s home. And then the last uh, thing we'll add at the end of that street is a runway, Ray, that will excite you. Maybe you can land your champ over here. And uh, an old hanger and a windsock. And then we'd like to do a carousel as well over the pond. A Spartan air travel trailer out here, all stainless steel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bought that in uh, Tangier, Indiana. Everything works on it, the uh, refrigerator, stove, the heat. Uh, we're in the process of restoring all of it. Hope to have that done in the next couple months here. Um, that was started after the war, World War II. J. Uh, J. Paul Getty started the uh, factory in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I think this was about the 2222nd one built. Uh, they built several different models. Uh, this one sold new for about $2,500. Uh, this one's a Spartan Manor, the one that uh, they used in the uh, long, long trailer with uh, Lucy and Ricky, I believe, was a Spartan Mansion. And it had been color-coded to uh, correspond with the yellow 53 Mercury convertible, but probably should have been all polished. And uh, beautiful trailer, way ahead of their time, beautiful inside. And he had all these components left over from World War II, so uh, that's the way good old American ingenuity works. And he just started up a travel trailer business. And these things are incredibly strong. They have spars like an airplane wing. And um, they say in a rollover, you just get some scratches. Now, I don't, I don't care to try that, try that out, but <laughs> that's what I hear. And uh, beautiful, bright red caboose out here. Mm -hmm. uh, that was donated by uh, Norfolk uh, uh, Southern, uh, Norfolk Western back then. And a good friend of mine uh, uh, is uh, part of the railroad, and he helped secure that. And they donated that to the foundation. It was in Atlanta, Georgia. And we were going to try to get it closer to Kokomo, and we, uh, I guess it derailed in Fostoria, Ohio. Uh, blew an air tank uh, right under the bathroom. And uh, they were afraid of the liability, so a good friend of mine, Ed Brown, and I got up at 1 o'clock in the morning and drove to Fosteria, Ohio with cutting torches and cut off the mingle steel. And uh, we had 210-ton cranes come over and set it off the trucks and then the trucks off the track so that they wouldn't have any liability. Yeah. Yeah. Then we went back with three low boys, two more 110-ton cranes, then brought it to <laughs> our location, picked up two more 110-ton cranes, and set it off on the track on the coldest day of winter last year.